Hi, I'm James, and I like to play basketball, much like the 450 million people around the world like me. I like to play on the courts, I like to watch highlights from the NBA, and I even like to play basketball themed video games. Which is weird, because the people don't realise its popularity is rising as we speak. As you may know, basketball was invented in 1891 by Dr. James Naismith, and it became one of America's most popular sports with the NBA. Basketball was introduced in the UK until 1892-1893 by CJ Proctor. Because of this, this led to it becoming one of the most popular sports and the fastest popular sport in the UK. However, it is still a tier 2 sport, where football, rugby, cricket and tennis are the most popular. So, why is that? Why is basketball less popular and what can we do to make it more popular? Sit back, relax, and now we'll look at the popularity of basketball in the UK. AJ on the beat.net. documented that basketball is very popular in the United States and other parts of Europe. What about the people of the UK? I went to Salisbury College to investigate. Do you know about basketball? Um, yeah, I've seen it on telly, um, played it at uh, college and seen friends play it at university as well. Uh, yes I do. Uh, yeah. How do you all do you know anyone that plays basketball? Oh, I know a few people that play basketball. But... Uh, anyone that famous? Um, not personally, but I might be able to I know some people locally, and I know a few friends who like Stephen Curry, LeBron James. Recently, Basel's had a rise up participation levels than in 2013 to the representative of UK sport, but is it as popular as everyone thinks it will be? Do you think it's a popular sport here in the United Kingdom? Um, not really, I don't really hear about it much. I mean, I know there's a few teams, professional teams, but you don't really see it on TV or anything big like you in America. In the UK, I don't think it's that popular, however, it's more popular in America. Yeah, I think so. There's a lot of um, outdoor courts, so you see a lot of young people playing outside as well as indoors, so it's one of those sports that you can play all year round. If you're one of the people that doesn't know anything about basketball, then you're not alone. A recent survey said that 41% of people don't know or know nothing about basketball. But is that true? Well, sit back and relax as five college students from my class fail as they try to guess NBA players. Right, question number one. No. Uh, I have no idea who he is, but I've seen him. Yeah, I don't know who that is. Man, it can count to 100. I do. Chamberlain? Curry Irvin. Next one. Michael Jordan. Correct. Mr. Ball, I don't know. Uh, I can't believe he's playing the muscle player. The reason I'm on the wall line. Oh, Michael Jordan. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Um, oh god, uh, 
Draw. Yeah. Draw. Yes! I got one! <laughs> All I know is LeBron James. He's the only guy I know. LeBron, LeBron James! Oh, that's the Eagle Rookie of the Year or something, didn't he? Yeah. Um. No, uh, go on. Chris Paul. Oh, um, James. No, Stephen Curry. Stephen Curry. I'll give you that. Stephen Curry. Yeah. Are you wearing glasses? That's Paul Oh, right. Uh, no. Green Abdul Jabbar. Right, last one. No. Oscar Robinson. And then Michael. Oscar Robinson. He's tall. He's really narrowed down. Um, pass. Oscar Robinson. Mm. I pass. Right. Oscar Robinson. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Zero point five out of ten. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was great. Thank you. I'd like to thank the Academy. Thank you. So there you go. The general public knows about basketball, but only the current players and teams, not any historical ones. But what about people who actually play it? What are their opinions? I went to Gillingham School to check out uh, Basketball Academy to get their opinions. While the professionals play in massive arenas, the rest of us play on the hard courts perfecting our game. These players are from an academy provided by the South Coast Tires Basketball Club, a local club at Dorset. Their men's squad, as of when I'm making this documentary, currently second in the Southern Area Basketball Association. And they have academies all across Dorset. I went to Gillingham School where, every Tuesday, they practice under the guidance of Sue Ted Craig, one of the players in the men's squad. What do you think of the popularity of basketball in the United Kingdom? It's pretty high further up north of England. Um, you push in from, say, Reading upwards, basketball is actually very, very popular. And it's one of probably the fourth most played sport in the UK. I think it's relatively popular. I'd say more urban areas. It was more popular, such as London, like they've got their own league and everything. I think they get quite a good crowd coming. Uh, well, if you'd asked me a couple of months ago, I would have said um, pretty much non-existent, um, only in clubs. Uh, but I've been spending a lot of time up in London, and, um, and on the street course there, there are a lot more people from down in the countryside. I think it's growing, but it's not quite there yet. On a level of like football or rugby, but it's growing. Despite these guys loving the sport, there isn't enough money for it to go around. In 2013, UK Sport decided to give away its £7 million funding for basketball, as they thought Great Britain wouldn't have much success in the sport after its poor performance in the 2012 Olympic Games in London. However, in 2015 they decided to give it back after they turned participation levels to account for the first time as that increased over the past two years. Do you think the sport needs more funding from the UK government? We've just picked up £4.7 million from Sports England and the National Lottery, but yet I know for a fact that none of that money will come down to self. Um, I mean, yes and no. I mean, um, so the easy answer would be to say yes, because it's not a big sport here. Um, money incentivizes growth and it would encourage more and more people to play. Um, but on the other hand, it's on, on the communities and the clubs themselves to sort of um, elevate basketball to the next level and make it more popular. The money funding is going up north in the London, Manchester, Birmingham area. They've got um, professional sized basketball hoops outdoors and indoors. But again, the, money, the funding's there, it's just not on the south of England. What other aspects need to be considered to make basketball popular? What other aspects? Um, just probably more advertisement and like more TV towards it and more sort of you know, media, like within the UK as well, not just America, like the NBA. Um, accessibility, it's like i got to come up to Gill and Shark for each um, day to play basketball and it's not that accessible where I live. Influence, like more popular sporting figures in Britain. The game can also be used for everyday education. It not only helps students physically, but also mentally as well. Do you believe that basketball should be a part of everyday education? It is part of everyday education. Most schools I've been to and worked at, at least the second term, so term two in most schools, they do it for a half a term and coach basketball. They teach basketballs 
at most schools. I think it's, it's, it is good for a sport and sort of getting to know friends as a team and stuff, like any team sport is like that. So I would say yeah. I think so, yeah. It's a, it's a sport that everyone, uh, sort of gets everyone off the feet. Um, you know, it's, it's a good team sport, so I think absolutely it should be part of the education. Yeah, it's good team building, communication, important skills you need growing up. These guys are hoping to play in universities and even to play professionally. However, some of them might actually play as a pastime. Either way, basketball will be a part of these guys' everyday lives. Well, that's just two of the opinions I got. The third and final one is the people who've actually played the game professionally. With basketball's popularity in America being so high, it will be inevitable when it comes into the United Kingdom. 1987 was the inaugural season of the British Basketball League, or BBL for short. It is still going strong today with 13 other teams from England and Scotland. However, there are more amateur teams in local areas. I got to meet the players from the Salisbury Suns team to get their experiences on the game and also their opinions on the game's popularity. I started when I got to secondary school. One of the activities I picked up there, so I started when I was about 11. Played a load of basketball at school and uh, school side. Played a load of basketball in the men's league in, uh, in London. Uh, eventually, I moved down to Salisbury after I finished university. And I started off playing uh, in the London League with Greenwich uh, basketball, and then I went to Devon, started playing with Plymouth Raiders uh, National League. Uh, and I played with them for five years. Ended up um, playing for Wiltshire and then South West England. Um, never quite made England, but uh, under 14s um, for South West, uh, the coach told me I need to go and find a National League club, basically. It's uh, the closest one to me. Uh, that happened to be Southampton. So it was a little bit of a trek and twice a week, sort of two hours. Um, on a Monday and a Thursday. Despite the BBL being the men's premier basketball league, it isn't as widely popular as the NBA or the EuroLeague. As of 2016, the BBC has the rights to show the BBL Cup Final in London. Meanwhile, BT Sport has the rights to show NBA games. So why is that? It might have to do with the star factor. You all know LeBron James, Kobe Bryant and Steph Curry. But we don't know the players that play in the BBL. However, former Chicago Bulls star Dennis Rodman, who also played with Michael Jordan, one of the greatest players of all time, played in the UK for a short time. Um, do you get noticed a lot in public as a basketball player? Uh, I can't say that I've ever been picked out as a basketball player. Um, I just uh, don't think I'm, I do wear clothes that uh, I associate with the sport. Um, but no, I don't think I actually uh, have ever been, ah, oh, you must play basketball. So. Um, I get noticed if I'm wearing the gear, because there's quite a lot of um, Immigrants from Eastern Europe and uh, like Spain, places like that. And I get a lot of people coming up to me if I'm wearing full basketball kit in the gym with Jordan logos. People come up to me and say, "Oh, where, where can I where can I play? Is there a club in Salisbury?" Uh, when I played in Devon, uh, there was moments when I was noticed. Mainly, people say, "You're tall. You must play basketball." So other than that, not really. Also, England doesn't have enough exposure for new players. One example of this is mixtapes, where when a person films a basketball player's best plays and puts them into a montage with soundtrack. Mixtapes are generally known for YouTube, with channels like Baller's Life, Elite Mixtapes and Hoops Fix generating loads of other mixtapes and helping launch NBA careers for players like Ben Simmons, Jamal Crawford and Brandon Ingram. Do you think that there is not do you think there is not enough exposure for young British players? I think that because 
the, the lack of popularity in terms of basketball across the country. Um, I'm not sure if it warrants the exposure that is probably required. Um, I think exposure sort of comes if you're good enough. Uh, certain people do get good exposure, like when uh, the World Dang finally got um, signed to the NBA and went pro, and the World Dang played really well. So he got the exposure, he was in all the national newspapers. I think Bulls games might even have been preferred on things like BT Sport and stuff like that because of him. So we, we just need more people like that to go through the ranks. Uh, again, I think it relates to the, the pockets and the environment in which you live in. The UK also isn't that symbolic for basketball. Like I said, it's a tier 2 sport here where football, etc. aren't the most popular. However, Europe is considered the most popular basketball destination with their own league, the EuroLeague, even making it to the mainstream America when they made it playable on the NBA 2K video game. So why are we left out then? Do you think basketball is left out of, left out of any European competitions? Um, again, I think, I'm, again, I'm, I'm not sure about this, but I think it's all due to whether you qualify or not, and that's what it used to be. I, I think that because the, the lack of popularity in terms of basketball across the country. Um, I'm not sure if it warrants the exposure that is probably required. I have to say I agree with my colleagues here. I have no idea why England or the British clubs are not playing in the EuroLeague. Um, it may be a process of qualification. Um, I honestly don't know. Um, I don't think we're good enough to be there, but then you don't know that until you get there, so maybe we should get some teams there and uh, find out. When I said I'm making this documentary, I wanted to raise awareness for the sport of basketball and to tell people that it is a good sport if people give it a chance. It is true that if you haven't set out on a court, you don't have the slightest clue what it is. But when it comes to it, people who have the most passion for the game end up playing it even if they are old. So in conclusion, it's not America and other European countries that can play basketball. Everyone can play, even here in the West Country, where I am. It's all about getting a ball, finding a court, and just having fun. Because everyone that plays basketball all play for fun. And that's all that matters, right? Thanks for watching.